Hi everyone, this is Andrew. Today I'll be talking about some investment options in the Australian market. Many of these options can will be available overseas as well, so don't feel like this is only Australia, but these are some Australian websites that will help you uh, decide. The first website is infochoice.com.au. It gives you a good summary of all the savings accounts and term deposits. So let's start with the safest option, which is investing your money in a bank. Well, putting your money in the bank, I guess. You're not really investing, are you? Putting your money in the bank. <laughs> Uh, so there's two options, there's savings accounts and term deposits. Let's take a look at term deposits first. You'll come to this page, just hit go. You can adjust these options here, $10,000 and so on, but it doesn't really matter. Just a word of warning, make sure you deselect this show sponsored listings first. So you get an accurate uh, view of the market. So the highest uh, interest rate you can get for one year is 2.85%. Not that great. If you go out to five years, then you can get up to three point, oh, here's one, three point one. Not very good, I think, because after five years, well, within five years, the interest rates could easily go up, and then you've locked your money away at a fairly low rate. Not such a great investment, I think. Now, if we look at uh, the high interest online savings accounts, this is probably a better option. This is where I invest most of my money. Again, hit go, because usually, especially of late, these are as good or better than term deposits in terms of interest rate, and you have access to your money, which is good, isn't it? Again, make sure that you deselect this show sponsored listings first. Right, uh, for example, the first one is at, uh, Rubbo Direct, 3.05%. If you click on that, you'll probably find that this is an introductory rate. Yes, it says here, the introductory variable rate of 3.05% per annum is available for accounts opened on or after 23rd of August for a period of four months on balances up to $250,000. So it's only available for four months, and then it goes back to this rate of 1.9%. Not a great deal, I wouldn't bother. Matrimony, I'm pretty sure that's for only for people who are getting married soon. This one's an introductory rate. Lifesaver, I think, is only for younger people, maybe under 25. You can click on any of these to find the details out. Uh, Me Online. Uh, Usaver is what I'm currently using. The reason I do is because you can constantly get this 2.87% simply by depositing $200 into your account. And there's no withdrawal limit, so it's a pretty good deal. Next, the share market. Here's a highly recommended website called Self Wealth. I've made an account with them. I haven't used it yet though. Uh, they cl their claim to fame is that they only have $9.50 fixed fee trades. So if you scroll down, here's the Australian market price comparison. As you can see, it doesn't matter what the trade size is, even a million dollars here, you still only have to fork out $9.50. Whereas all the other companies have at least $1,000 in fees there. So if you wish to give the uh, market, the stock market a go, this is probably the place to do it. Okay, the next investment option is property investment. Now if you don't have enough money to buy a property outright or get a mortgage or whatever like myself, then you can buy, you can invest in what they call fractional property investment. That is where you buy sort of a share of a property. So BrickX is the uh, website that I'll be looking at today. Uh, it tells you how it all works here, but just click on the Properties tab and you can see that they've got a whole bunch of properties with all the details. Uh, for example, this one here has an estimated net rental yield of 1.51%. So that's less than, less than the bank account, isn't it? So maybe not such a great deal. The thing you're betting on is that your uh, investment goes up, like the property price goes up. So they have something called the brick price. Now what a brick is, is one ten thousandth of the cost of the property. So if we click on that property for example, it tells you all the details, uh, the net yield, the debt, so on. So it's currently got a debt of $165,000, the total cost was $905,000, that means there's an equity of $740,000, so one ten thousandth of that is $74, and that's what you're buying. So if you bought 10 of those for $740, you'd get this much yield on average from the rent, and 
I guess the main reason you do this is that you're banking on this going up. You're banking on this initial big brick price going up to say $100 if you were lucky. And then later you would sell and make a tidy cleanup. The only problem with that, if you go down here, is that you're relying on the cost of houses to go up and up and up. There it dropped. And it has been. It has been over the last 20 years. But who knows if a property crash will come or not. Nobody really does. It's for people who like a little bit of risk. So it's an option. I personally wouldn't use it, but it is an option for people who've got a little bit of money they'd like to invest in some property. Okay, the next category I'd like to look at is peer-to-peer -peer lending. So this website, ratesetter.com, I've got an account with them as well. You can lend out money, or you can borrow money too, but we're focusing on investment here. So click on the Lend tab. And as you can see, depending on how long you'd like to, uh, I guess, deposit your money for, you can get higher interest rates. So if you're willing to uh, put, say, $10,000 towards a five-year loan, you can get up to 9.1%. That's after fees, and that's the annualized rate. Pretty good deal. But it comes with risks, doesn't it? So if you can click on the Risks tab here, luckily they're very open about it. So here's a summary of the key investment risks. Borrower late payment or default. Borrower or series of borrowers to whom your funds are lent may delay or stop payment on a loan or default on a loan. In such circumstances, you may be protected by rate setter making a claim to the provision fund. However, there is no guarantee or warranty as to any protection from the provision fund, and as such, you may suffer financial loss. No provision fund protection. Assignment of your loan. If a borrower to whom your funds are matched defaults on a loan and you are not fully compensated by the provision fund or recovery efforts, rate setter may assign that defaulted loan to a third party, such as a collections agency. Right. Okay. So there's a few risks involved in this. Uh, next one. No withdrawal of no withdrawal of funds until end of lending market indicative term. Okay. So you invested in a five-year loan. Your that money's stuck in that until because somebody has your money, don't they? They've borrowed it. Investment longer than indicative term. Okay, could be a very, maybe somebody can't pay back on time or whatever. Borrower default impact on availability of funds. Differences in borrower credit, credit worthiness. Okay, differences in credit risks, variances. There's a whole bunch of risks here. So you'd, you'd like to, you'd have to be a bit of a risk taker, I guess, to use this, at least for high amounts of money. Let's go back and check out the uh, actual details of the, for example, the five year income. Just click on that. The people's rate, okay, indicative terms. Here they have all the details about each of the lending markets. So just say you're going to go with the five year, which gives you the highest interest rate. Your funds are matched to four or five year loans. Loans may be secured or unsecured and be to individuals or business. You commit to lend to rate setter borrowers for an indicative term of five years. You are repaid in up to 60 equal monthly payments, comprising principal and interest. That's pretty good. So just say you invested $10,000 in a loan, you lent out $10,000, well you'd get back 1 60th of that every month plus the interest, as long as the borrowers repay you on time. So you're getting a constant revenue stream. So it's a, it sounds like a decent deal as long as you're prepared to take all those risks that we saw before. Okay, and my final investment option is Bitcoin. Uh, you may have heard a lot about this recently. If you look at the recent prices of it, you can see that it's gone through a huge spike in recent. If you look at one week, um, it's been up and down a little bit. One month, so this is just Coindesk I'm using, this is in US dollars. It's gone up quite incredibly over one month even. But if you look at the one year, Right. If you bought it back one year ago, it would have been about $800. And now it's worth about 20 times that amount at about $16,000. So yes, you could have, uh, what's that? 2000% interest rate. It's crazy. It's very volatile. Very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Speculative. But some people are into it. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Especially now to, to trust that you could, let's just say I went out and bought one coin for $17,000. Um, 
can I really expect that to double in price? I don't know. I really don't. I don't think anybody knows, honestly. Some people are saying that this will go to a million dollars, but I think they're just saying that to try to attract more people into it. It could easily drop too. It could all go, it just could come to a crashing halt and you could lose all your money. So Bitcoin for people who want to take extreme risk. <laughs> and finally, this is more to do with passive income. But YouTube is not really an investment. If you're willing to make a video like I'm doing now, there is a potential for you to make some money, and a constant stream of money. So if you look up in this trending tab, a lot of these videos have millions of views. Now millions of views equals lots and lots of dollars in ad advertising revenue. So you don't have to be a professional videographer or whatever to make a YouTube video. You can just get a microphone and speak like I'm doing now and show some things and you can potentially get lots and lots of views. For example, Chinese Daredevil's final stunt. Uh, this guy, I've heard a lot about him recently on the news. Uh, he made lots of Daredevil sort of videos by climbing skyscrapers and the like, but sadly he fell on his final stunt and he died. Um, yes, he was very popular on social media. He got lots and lots of views and had lots of followers, but it wasn't really worth the risk, was it? So I wouldn't suggest going to that extreme, but at least you could talk about, say, pottery or uh, fast cars or investment or whatever you want, whatever you whatever you have some sort of understanding of, and you could potentially uh, get lots of lots of people watching. And that's it. So I started out with um, investing in the bank. That's what I mainly do because I'm fairly risk averse. I don't like taking too much risk. Then you could think about the stock market. Fractional property investment such as BrickX, peer-to-peer -peer lending such as uh, Rate Setter, Bitcoin if you really like taking risk, and the safest option if you've got free time on your hands to get a potential passive income would be YouTube. You can do it for free, <laughs> just need a microphone and a computer. Great, thank you for listening. I hope this has been informative. If you have any other investment ideas, please them in the comments below because I'm always looking for something to invest in. Thank you.